Hey guys, in this tutorial I'll show you how to create these slit refracted glass overlays. We'll go through how to get the basic setup sorted and then I'll show you a couple of techniques to create some variations of the look. So before we get started, in order to really sell the effect we're going to be using a dash of chromatic aberration. Unfortunately there's no built in effect in After Effects that allows us to achieve this using an adjustment layer. But thankfully the guys that plug in everything have a free plugin called Quick Chromatic Aberration 2 which will do exactly what we want. The link to download the plugin is in the description below. Ok so let's first set up a basic straightforward reeded glass effect. I've already set up my comp and I've got this little dog as a background image and a quick little text animation and my composition settings are HD 25 frames per second. Ok. Now the main effect that we're going to be using to create our glass is going to be the displacement map effect. So let's first create a new adjustment layer and we'll call this glass effect and let's apply the effect, effect, distort, displacement map. So the displacement map effect basically takes the colour values from the displacement map layer that we define here and converts them to either a positive or negative value which defines whether or not our displacement happens positively or negatively. And we can define exactly what kind of information we're, we're taking from the displacement layer by selecting from one of these options. And we're just going to select luminance because then that means we can create a grayscale displacement map because then the only thing we really need to keep in mind is anything black in our displacement map will cause our image to be displaced negatively and anything white will cause it to be displaced positively. Okay, so now let's create our displacement map and we'll create a new composition that matches our main comp. And we'll just call this O1 displacement map pre. Okay, and because we're going to be creating reeded glass, which is made up of thin strips of glass, our displacement map needs to be made up of thin strips. So now let's create a thin solid and we'll just call this strip. Set the width to 55 and now we'll add a gradient ramp. And because we want our displacement to happen horizontally, we just need to tweak the start and end of our ramp to make sure our gradient is going horizontally rather than vertically. So I'll just select this point and move it to the left, select the white point and move it to the right. And then we can go in here, we'll set this to 0, 540, 55 and 540. Okay, so now we have a single strip and now we just need to clone it. And we can do that using the motion tile effect. Let's go to effect, stylize, motion tile. A motion tile will just tile the layer that we've applied it to. So we just want to tile it horizontally. So we just need to increase the output width value until we fill the screen. Okay, now let's jump back into our main comp and we'll bring in our displacement map pre and we'll just drop it to the bottom. And let's go to our glass effect and then in our displacement map effect let's set the displacement map layer to displacement map pre and we'll set this to effects and masks now you see we've got some distortion going on but i don't want it to distort vertically so i will set the max vertical displacement to zero and i'll just increase the horizontal displacement until we get this effect and i found about 100 works well now if i zoom in you'll see this effect is quite is a little bit sharp so let's just add a very slight blur to this effect, blur and sharpen, fastbox blur, and we'll set this to say 0.3 and select repeat the edge pixels. And then we'll add our chromatic aberration effect, plug in everything, quick chromatic aberration too. And we can adjust the position and scale to adjust how much of a RGB split effect we get. And I find that by leaving the channels to red and blue and setting the position to two, gets quite a nice subtle effect. Now to add a little bit more realism, we can duplicate our displacement map pre-layer and bring it over the top of our glass effect. And we're going to call this shading. And if we set the blending mode to overlay and drop the opacity down, we can get some nice subtle highlights. And now if we just want our glass panel to only cover part of the image, we could just create a mask over our glass effect. As you can see, it has no effect if I move the adjustment layer and the same if I move the displacement map. And to solve this, we can add a transform effect to our displacement map layer and parent that to our glass effect layer. So let's select our displacement map pre layer and go to effect, distort, transform. And what we'll do is we'll link the position, scale, and rotation from this effect to the main properties of our glass effect layer. So let's unfold our effects and go to our glass effects. 
and we'll start with position. So hit P to bring up position. Then our, in our transform effect on our displacement map layer, select the pick whip and just parent that to our position. Next we'll do scale. So go to a glass effect, hit S to bring up scale. Then on the scale property in our transform effect on the displacement map, let's pick whip to the scale on our glass effect. And finally, let's do that for rotation too. So R to bring up rotation. And again, pick whip from the transform effect to the glass effect. And then we just need to parent our shading layer to our glass effect layer. So now if you select your glass effect, you can move it around, you can scale it and rotate it. And of course that means you can animate it too. So now let's go to our second example where we'll give the glass a nice frosty glass look and we'll tweak the displacement map to create some zigzags. So I already have my comp set up with this little collage animation and the composition settings are the same as example one. And like example one, I already have the glass effect, shading and displacement map layers in place and all set up. And if I turn these back on, you'll see that we have the same redid glass look as we did in example one. So let's start by jumping into the displacement map pre-comp. So now let's make these lines nice and zigzaggy and to do that, we'll use the wave warp effect. So select our strip layer, go to effect, distort, wave warp and first let's just change the direction to zero and straight away you'll see we have these nice waves and by playing around with these settings you'll be able to get some really really nice cool effects which will come through on your glass layer but for this I'm just going to make ours nice and straight so let's just set the wave type to triangle and we'll set the wave height to around 25 and bring the width up to 100 and just to stop the waves animating, let's set the wave speed to zero. And let's jump back into our main comp. Okay, and now we have this nice zigzag effect. And before we proceed to creating our frosted look, let's first just mask off a area of our glass effect. So let's go to shape layer, select ellipse tool, make sure fill is selected and let's just draw a circle. Let's make sure this is centered using the align tool and we'll call this mask. Now let's just bring this above the glass effect and we'll parent it to the glass effect and we'll set the track mat of our glass effect to alpha mat. And as you can see, we still have our shading layer visible. So let's just duplicate our mask and we'll bring this above our shading layer and on our track mat for our shading layer, set it to alpha mat and there we go. And now if we select our glass effect layer, we can move it, scale it, position it wherever we want within our composition. Let's just move it behind the text. Maybe we'll scale it up a little bit. Okay. So the first thing that we can do to get the frosted look is add a camera lens blur. Go to effect, blur and sharpen, camera lens blur. And we'll set the blur radius to 15. And we're gonna drag this, drag this above our fast box blur. And because our camera lens blur is doing a lot of blurring, uh, we can delete our fast box blur. You may find as well, now that we've added the blur, that the shading looks a bit out of place. So we can just go to our shading layer and tweak the opacity. Maybe bring it down to about 4 or 5%. Then the next thing we can do to our glass effect is add a scatter effect, which will add a tiny little bit of distortion and noise to our blur. So let's go to effect, stylize, scatter. And for some reason we get this error if scatter is added after our chromatic aberration. So hit OK and we just need to bring scatter above. And there we go. And so we can see what's going on. Let's zoom in. And if we just set the scatter amount to something between three and five, we get a nice sort of noisier look. Okay, let's zoom out. And then the very last thing we can do just to add a little bit more realism is to add a bit of a highlight around the edge of our glass layer. So let's duplicate our mask, bring it to the top and we can turn this on. And what we'll do is go to layer, layer styles, um, bevel and boss. And so we can see what's going on. Let's turn off our path and mask lines. And you'll see we have this edge highlight here. So let's go into our bevel and emboss properties and we'll just tweak the direction a little bit. And so we can see what this looks like on our glass. Let's set the blending mode to add. 
And you see we're getting a nice highlight here, but we're also getting this sort of shadow here. And to get rid of this, we can go to our shadow and we can set the shadow color to white. And instead of multiply, we can set this to screen as well. So then we get a second highlight and you'll probably just want to turn this down so it's so it's not quite as strong as our main highlight. Okay, and there we go. Okay, and for our third and final example, I'll show you how to create a sort of diamond pattern effect. And we'll build it in a way which allows you to easily change what the base of the pattern will be. And again, I've already got my comp set up exactly the same as our first example. And our shading and glass effects and displacement maps are all set up too. And I just have some background footage with just some text. So let's jump into our displacement map. And to create this pattern, we're actually going to create a tile which will then use motion tile to duplicate. And to keep things nice and clean, let's just create a new composition for our tile. So create a new comp. We'll set this to 03 tile and we'll set the size to 100 by 100. Okay. Now let's just zoom in. Now let's create a square. So go to our shape layer tool, select a rectangle, go to fill and let's make sure that we are set to 50% gray. And by double clicking our shape layer tool, it will create a shape layer that matches the same size of our comp. And now we have a square. Then what we'll do is go to effect, perspective, bevel edges. And we just need to increase this edge thickness until we have four sides like this. Then let's set the light intensity to one. So then we have a nice range between full black and full white. And we just need to tweak the angle a little bit so we get a nice variation. Uh, something like 15, 16 is okay. Now let's jump back to our displacement map pre-comp and we'll bring in our tile. And I'm actually gonna scale this down a little bit, say 50%. And then let's add our motion tile effects. So effect, stylize, motion tile. And we just need to output the width and height until we fill our comp. Okay. And if we jump back into our main comp, and you'll see we have this diamond effect already coming through. So we need to make a few tweaks to this. So I'm going to start off by turning off our shading layer. And let's go to our glass effect. And in the displacement map, I'm actually going to increase the vertical displacement to 250. And what this will do is just add a bit more interest and distortion to our effect. And just like in example two, I just want to contain the glass effect within a set area. So I'm going to select our shape layer tool. So I'll just draw a rectangle. And we'll bring this above our glass effect and we'll set the track mat of our glass effect to alpha mat. Now let's just zoom in and we just need to scale our rectangle so that we're nicely aligned with the squares of our displacement map layer. Okay. And then again, let's just parent this to our glass effect layer and we'll duplicate it and bring it above our shading set the trap mat of our shading to alpha mat let's just turn on our shading again and then let's just play with the opacity of our shading so we get a look that we like and then something like that and we could also repeat the same step as in example two where we add a highlight and if you want to change the pattern that we've got here, we can just jump into our O3 top and just replace the diamond with something else. Okay, there we go. I hope you found this useful. And hopefully now that you know the basics of the effect, you'll be able to take it and tweak it and make some really, really nice and cool displacement maps to get some really, really nice and uh, interesting effects. Thanks again for watching and goodbye.